Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Now many players will have spent a huge amount of time around inhabited space because of course that is where we all begin. Yet that vast cluster of star systems surrounding Earth and Soul is not the only inhabited bubble. In fact, there are numerous others. The most famous of which is of course Colonia surrounding the Jack Station, the infamous travelling station. But what of these other inhabited areas? Well, it appears the superpowers of the galaxy, the Federation, the Empire, and perhaps most notably the Alliance, are setting up base elsewhere. Whilst both the Federation and the Empire have remained fairly close to home, it's the Alliance that are making inroads into a rather special and spectacular area of space, the California Nebula. At a distance of around about 1,000 light years, this really isn't too far from home and is certainly nowhere near as far as Colonia, and you should be able to make it out here in reasonable time with just a modest ship. What's clear then is that humanity continues to expand its influence and the size of its population. And what's even more interesting is that it continues to do this in Nebula. This began around about 18 months ago with the construction of the space station Obsidian Orbital in the Maya system, which of course is in the Pleiades Nebula. In a somewhat tangently related piece of information, many people suspect that the Nebula themselves are areas of high alien interest. For example, we know that the alien barnacles are often found either in or in close proximity to Nebula. Why do I mention this? Well, with recent events and the discovery of the Thargoid structures, it's quite plausible that the aliens themselves might well have a rather unique perspective on humanity's encroachment into these regions. This then is one of my reasons for visiting this area again. In fact, I haven't been out to the California Nebula for well over two years now. In the distance there, that dark blue smudge is the Orion Nebula, and behind that, hidden by the redness of the California Nebula itself, is Barnard's Loop. So then, I'm out here to check on activity, human activity, to see where we've expanded to, to see what sorts of stations and bases are around here. Fortunately, there's a very easy way to do that with a galaxy map. We can simply filter by population, economy type, or indeed any other type of statistic that tells us about the nature of each uh, system. So what we're looking at for then is a base, either a space station or most likely a planetary one. And there we go, just on the edges of the California Nebula, we've located our first target. Now this system is going to be well known to anyone that ever visited this area, and it's certainly going to be well known to anyone who's interested in Elite Dangerous lore. Located out here is an Alliance outpost. The name of the base here is called Mick Turner. But before we talk some more about that, I noticed something else of interest in this particular system, an ammonia world. What's particularly interesting about planets with atmospheres like this is that they are suitable candidates for supporting a Thargoid life. Is this just a coincidence then? A world capable of supporting alien life, potentially hostile alien life, situated within the same system, the very same system, as a major Alliance outpost. Now, the Alliance have been long suspected of having associations and perhaps even some type of relationship with the Thargoids. Perhaps that's simply just crazy speculation or idle speculation at best. But some would perhaps say that the Alliance have been far too quiet for far too long. And I didn't check these other planets out here, but it seems to me that this one could potentially have an ammonia-based atmosphere as well. Anyway, over here to this planet, one of the landable bodies within this system, and you can see the McTurner base. So what's so special about that name? Well, McTurner has a special place in the history books of elite law. He was one of the founders of the Alliance of Independent Worlds. And here, at his base, we've got one heck of a gorgeous view. A view of Barnard's Loop, no less, which of course, in turn, is surrounded by completely inaccessible systems. Now, once out on a journey like this, it's always possible to just keep on going. There's point of interest after point of interest. Here in the distance you can see another nebula. This one is NGC 1333 and relatively nearby is another inhabited system. Now this one is an in, uh, independent star system and it contains within it an asteroid base. 
Now whilst there's not a whole lot of resources out this way, and there's certainly not much in the way of shipyards or outfitting, you can nonetheless come out here with an equipped ship and start participating in various missions. It might not earn you vast amounts of money, but nonetheless it is possible, and it also shows that no matter where you look, you're never too far away from a human outpost. Now in the distance I come across a very nice discovery, this right here is what's called a planetary nebula, and you can see it in the distance there, despite it looking so small, it's actually a very close, only a single jump away, and here we are right inside it, a truly awe inspiring spectacular location. Although unfortunately there's no landable bodies here, I think it could be reasonably argued that they're totally unnecessary when you can find a view as gorgeous as this one. But nebula are not always the only places you need to go to to find stunning views, sometimes they can be found in the most well, unsuspecting of places. Thanks to a reddit post from Devos, and a specific location given by redditor Zenotube, I made the relatively short journey out from the California nebula to this rather unusual ring to star. Now I have come across one of these before, but it's been a very very long time since I've seen such. Now if you are going to come out to visit something like this, and the system name is located in the video description, then I highly recommend you come here with a very cool running ship. Now I've flown up to the inner edges of the ring system here, and this is well within the fuel scooping zone, so like I say you will need a very cool running ship, you'll probably notice there that the heat on my ship right now is around the 41% region, and in regular flight my ship operates at around 22%. So if you come here with a hot running ship, chances are you won't be able to stay here for very long. Now this isn't the only ring star here, you can see there's also a couple of dwarf stars here. So this is certainly a region that is well worth visiting, a lot of nebula relatively nearby and a couple of very unusual looking stars. It's likely I'll be heading home very soon, although over there in the distance you can see the tantalising prospect of NGC 7822. And now that I'm this close, it's quite tempting to go for another visit. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.